Welcome to The Undercurrent, your source for grassroots news. I'm Lauren Windsor. On Thursday, March 14th, the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment, also known as ACE, and Occupy Fights Foreclosures successfully disrupted the retail banking conference in Carlsbad, California. Protesters took the stage during a speech by Wells Fargo CEO John Stumpf. ACE, a housing advocacy nonprofit, is pushing the bank to offer more principal reductions for struggling borrowers on the brink of foreclosure. Homeowner Betty Badro confronted Stumpf directly about the impending sale of her home of 19 years. And I can't define that situation. So. Hi, my name is Betty Badro. Hi. And I'm a homeowner for 19 years. Why are these qualifications you've given me on my mortgage? And I don't appreciate that. I'm sorry. Excuse me? No, you're not going to touch me. It's illegal to touch people. John, don't walk away. You are hurting a lot of people that own me. Do not touch me. I have my, I have my rights. Okay, speak. I'm an American you get citizen. Security, please. You, all of you, listen. Tell your story. Tell your story. I'm going to tell my story. I've lived in my house 19 years, and Wells Fargo is trying to make sure that I lose my home. And don't touch me. Security, please. I want everybody to know that the Wells Fargo are thieves. They're throwing people out of their houses. They're using the short sale so that so that you can make uh, profits. Get out of my way. This is, I, am, I will be, I will, I will tell my story. I will not lose my home. It's listed for sale for tomorrow. I need, I, I qualify for a loan modification. The hot council says I qualify. Why are you doing on Friday, March 22nd, Los Angeles Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa, former Vice President Al Gore, and Sierra Club Executive Director Michael Brune gathered for a press conference at the LA Department of Water and Power to announce that the city would be coal-free by 2025. The mayor said that he would replace coal in part with natural gas. I was the only, and I repeat, only reporter to ask a question during this press conference. Here's the question. I'll take a few questions from the press, from the press, and if there are no questions, all is good. We'll take some pictures. Thank you very much. I have a question. Who are you with? I'm with the Young Turks. The undercurrent? Oh, yes. So you had mentioned that you would, 40% of energy comes from these two coal power plants, and that one of the sources that you'll use is natural gas. Will the city be obtaining that natural gas through fracking? No, I don't. We won't. Um, the I can tell you uh, that plant will be about 60% the size of the coal plant. We'll also be able with the, these agreements to be able to continue to use those transmission lines where we'll uh, be able uh, to bring solar uh, and um, wind power uh, to our city. Thank you very much. Note that I was only allowed the one question, and then the mayor quickly declared the session over. I asked him again during our brief interview. So I asked prior about uh, replacing that uh, particular fuel source with natural gas, and you had said that it will not come from fracking. Is well, that correct? The, the None of the natural gas. gas that will replace the coal will come from fracking? Fracking at that site, no. Many of you may remember my prior coverage of the February 17 Forward on Climate rally at the White House, where Michael Brune was arrested with Bill McKibben, Daryl Hanna, and Robert Kennedy Jr. Here's Michael Brune's take on so-called clean coal. We need strong leadership from the president on all fronts on climate change, getting off all dirty fuels, coal, oil and gas, and really going all in on clean energy. He supports an all of the above strategy and uh, really particularly with clean coal. Can you talk to us about clean coal? Is that a viable energy source? It's about as viable as the idea that Elvis is still alive or that the Easter Bunny um, brings eggs and chocolates uh, you know, to, to kids around the world. Um, Clean coal it doesn't exist right now. There's no such thing as clean coal. There's actually no way to make coal fully clean and to have any shot at actually being economically competitive. What we do know is that 
coal can't even compete economically with new forms of energy, advanced forms of energy. And that's why we know that this transition away from coal will accelerate in the years ahead. On Friday, April 5th, I interviewed Ben Mansky. Ben was the campaign manager for Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein in the 2012 election. He's also a member of the national executive team for Move to Amend. Move to Amend, you will remember, is one of the leading organizations fighting for campaign finance reform. Here are some of the highlights of our interview. A Democrat friend of mine uses the acronym for GREEN, get Republicans elected mm -hmm. every November. So given that success of the ballot box mm -hmm. for the Green Party is a threat to the Democratic Party, how do you move forward with that reality? Well, I think that that's not the reality in most of the country. I think that it, it was very interesting. I, mean, I was on the Nader 2000 campaign staff, and uh, I was the Midwest field director in 2000. And uh, what we saw on the campaign was that the Democratic Party was putting tons of money into convincing people not to vote green in states like California and Massachusetts. These were safe states. These were states that there was no way, uh, even with all the Koch brothers' money that might have been deployed in that election, uh, that, that Al Gore was going to lose those states. But yet there was an effort to suppress the green vote. So for me, at that time, seeing that, uh, it became pretty clear to me that, that it wasn't actually a serious criticism, that it was actually about just destroying a competitor. I mean, the reality is that elections are a multi-billion dollar industry, not for us, but for those who are in mainstream electoral politics. And they have a lot to lose. And uh, you know, the Green Party does represent a challenge to the existing system. I personally feel like we're staring down the barrel of a gun. And we are. It's going to take, like, we're on the precipice. Mm -hmm. It could take one major environmental catastrophe mm -hmm. in San Francisco for LA to be wiped out with water supply. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if we didn't have readily available water here? Mm -hmm. What kinds of different. It would be horrific. It, it would. There would be looting, mm -hmm. there would be violence. And I just. I think people don't realize until they see something like Fukushima happen mm -hmm. that all of our risk models mm -hmm. don't take into account these like very realistic events that that will occur within our lifetime. I mean, how do you, how do you address that as a party that we really don't have the amount of time we think we do? Well, the good thing is the Green Party is not on its own. Right? The Green Party is the electoral voice for this broader movement. There are others who have tried to offer that voice, but for various reasons, the Greens have been more successful than everybody else in the last 20 years. Um, that said, it's, it's not just a problem for the Greens, it's a problem for anybody who's concerned about the fact that people don't confront our problems until it's too late, too often, right? But these are your signature issues. Right. Like, as a party, climate change, a sign signature issue, yeah. uh, war, a signature issue. And what we're talking about that needs to happen to address each of these issues is not... It's a total social transformation. It's a we're revolution. We're talking about a paradigm. A new economy. A completely new A new, new constitution. Paradigm. A new politics. How do we get yeah. to the new paradigm? Bottom line, it's time for a new paradigm. Don't be surprised when your economic model of infinite growth hits the hard economic reality of finite resources. The time is now to stop the corrupting influence of money in politics. I'm Lauren Windsor. Thanks for watching. Get pulled in to the undercurrent. My state of mind. Have I been hypnotized to believe in lies with the monologue? Questioning God like half a cock, cause the odds keep stacking up. Where is the illumination for the human nature?